dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. Did you know that the eye is kind of a window into your brain? So the eye is becoming a very interesting research tool to investigate Alzheimer's disease because the retina at the back of your eye is actually an extension of the central nervous system. Anyway, before I get too excited about this, this blog will highlight some of the most impactful papers in this research field from 2023, brought to you by the Eye as a Biomarker Professional Interest Area Group. Okay, so I've already told you about the cool connections between the eye and the brain, but I'd like to tell you a little more. So not only does part of the eye connect to the brain, but the retina also shares cellular and anatomical similarities to the brain. And importantly, research has shown that many pathological hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease observed within the brain are also found within the retina, such as amyloid accumulation. So as with all the year in review webinars, a member of the professional interest area presents some of the most influential papers of the field that were published in the past year. PhD student Yasmin Dadugaba was the presenter this year, and they gave a fantastic overview of the most impactful papers published in 2023. The moderator of the session was Lee Stigrup, and the panellists were Jessica Alba, Robert Riesman, and Dietmar Tal. So over the past decade, the field has really grown. Yasmin highlighted areas in which the field had grown and importantly revealed that there has been an increase in gender equality in these studies, an increase in ethnodiverse studies, and an increase in comparative biomarker studies being published. As there were so many papers published in 2023 about the eye and Alzheimer's disease, they obviously couldn't all be highlighted. However, Yasmin split the research focuses into four main categories and highlighted key papers within each. The four categories were as follows. Correlation studies, biomarker studies, preclinical studies, and teopathy studies. So one important correlation study that was highlighted aims to get a better understanding of pathological features of Alzheimer's disease within the retina using histopathological and biochemical assessment of post-mortem tissue. In this study, Peronio and colleagues included both mild cognitive impairments and clinically diagnosed Alzheimer's disease patients and compared these to individuals with normal cognition. The study found increases in amylo beta 42 within the retina in those mild cognitive impairment and AD patients compared to individuals with normal cognition. The amount they observed within the retina seemed to mirror the amount observed within the brain. They also found that the pathology observed within the retina appeared to correspond to BRAC staging. The group concluded that the retina is susceptible to Alzheimer's disease changes. Moreover, it is suggested that the retina could indeed be a reliable biomarker for non-invasive detection and also monitoring of Alzheimer's disease. The same research group also investigated vascular changes in the retina, as vascular changes are often observed in Alzheimer's disease. They investigated endothelial height junction components and cerebral amyloid angiopathy, also known as CAA, in post-mortem retinas in different types of blood vessels, in mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's disease patients, and then they compared this to controls who were cognitively normal. They reported that there were decreases in tight junction components, including zonular occludens 1 and cloudin 5, in both mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease patients. Interestingly, they reported that decreases in cloudin 5 were linked with CAA, and decreases in zonular occludens 1 seem to correlate more with cognitive changes and pathology within the brain. The group concluded that the retina is also susceptible to vascular changes associated with Alzheimer's disease, and that imaging of blood vessels within the retina could also be helpful in monitoring Alzheimer's disease. So with regards to biomarkers, the retina could be a very important avenue for biomarker development for Alzheimer's disease because the retina is easily accessible with non-invasive high-resolution imaging equipment, just like the equipment that's used at an optician's appointment. As research seems to show, 
that the pathology associated with Alzheimer's disease does indeed develop in the retina, this sort of equipment may be able to observe this early in disease. And so to investigate whether this was possible, Arthur and colleagues wanted to investigate whether optical coherence tomography could be used to assess blood vessel changes in cognitively unimpaired, low-risk and high-risk patients. This study showed that multimodal retinal imaging could be a potential biomarker for early detection of Alzheimer's disease, as the group observed that the periarterial capillary free zone in the high-risk group was significantly larger than the low-risk group, and the same observations were also observed for the perivenual capillary free zone. Another biomarker study that was highlighted in the webinar was conducted by Rebukas and colleagues. Importantly, this was a longitudinal study that investigated retinal microvasculature and the incidence of dementia over a period of 10 years. The study looked at sociodemographic factor characteristics as well as lifestyle, physical and mental health, cognitive function and ophthalmic history. These measurements were taken every two to three years for up to 17 years. The authors found that 21.9% of the sample developed dementia and they observed that an increase in the tortuosity of arteries in the retinal vasculature was associated with an increased risk of dementia in the 10 years that followed. Moreover, they also observed that higher vein tortuosity and a broader retinal calibre was associated with vascular or mixed dementia, but not Alzheimer's disease. The group concluded that changes within the retinal vasculature were linked to the risk of developing dementia. However, replication studies are needed. And there has also been a lot of progress made this year with some of the preclinical studies. One of the major papers in this category was conducted by Levacar and colleagues, and they showed that 3D organoid models can be developed from human pluripotent stem cells to study the retina. Furthermore, these models could be used to observe specific phenotypes of Alzheimer's disease, including an increase in the ratio of amyloid beta 42 and amyloid beta 40, as well as an increase in hyperphosphorylated tau. This study showed that it is possible to develop 3D organoids that can be used to investigate early changes in Alzheimer's disease. And the professional interest area also published their own paper, focusing on the challenges and future directions of the field as a whole, with some of the major challenges being a lack of standardization, data collection, and image processing across studies. In addition to that also being a lack of standardization with regards to examining Alzheimer's disease pathology in the retina. The authors also suggested that there needs to be a consensus on inclusion and exclusion criteria of participants to be included in retinal Alzheimer's disease biomarker studies. The webinar concluded with a panel discussion and there seemed to be a consensus between some of the panel members that one of the most important things the field needs to do is to continue to learn about the pathology within the retina in order to really understand how the eye could be a potential biomarker for Alzheimer's disease. Interestingly, an attendee also brought the idea of tears being used as a biomarker, and apparently there is already research into this happening, which is pretty cool if you ask me. So even though this isn't my own research area, it definitely feels like this is an exciting field to be in right now, especially with regards to the growing understanding of pathology within the retina and when we think about the eye's potential role as a biomarker for Alzheimer's disease. So definitely keep an eye on this space over the next year or so. And don't forget that you can join iStart to get access to previous webinars and to keep up to date with all the things happening with the I as a biomarker professional interest area. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.